right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do cough and deep breathing with our patients. Um, it's really important. It's considered a pulmonary toilet. That's what we call it a lot of times. It helps clear out those lungs, helps open them up, and helps prevent pneumonia. So the first part of that is the coughing part. I know it sounds kind of silly to teach someone how to actually cough, but it's important. Um, when you have this, I think a lot about our abdominal surgery patients, maybe our chest surgery patients. So you have to be able to protect that sternum, protect that wound, the incision. So that's where the pillow comes in. So you have your patient support their stomach or their incision, give themselves just a little bit of that negative pressure, not where they're pushing hard, but just enough to kind of stabilize. And then you teach your patient to take a deep breath in and then they have to really, really cough. Um, I see a lot of patients go, <coughs> and when they do that, it doesn't work as well because what's that, what that's doing is kind of grinding those incision areas and it hurts pretty bad. Um, and then that good cough isn't getting that junk out. So when you have them cough, you need to tell them to take a deep breath in <coughs> and then they cough. This is where manners don't count. So they can definitely do that big cough. We want them to do a couple of coughs um, couple coughs an hour, usually about five to 10. Again, make sure you look at that facility policy. Now we've got this little device called a flutter valve. Um, other places may call it things different, but I'm just gonna kind of explain what you do. The patient puts their mouth on this mouthpiece right here. And when they do that, they breathe into it. So they'll actually blow into the device and it makes like a little vibration sound. It helps vibrate the lungs and it helps break up any mucus. All right, this right here is called an incentive spirometer, or some people call it an IS. Um, it helps open the lungs as well, and I'm using an index card for a mouthpiece, just so that way I don't put my mouth on the actual device. Um, your patient can because it is one patient use. So your patient will get this usually before surgery, and they'll take it home with them. Um, a couple of pieces to note. There's this little part right here. This gives your patient a gauge and kind of a goal. So if your patient's been breathing and they get this big old part right here up to a certain level, you can move this up to where you get that patient to make a, a good goal. And then there's this little blue thing right here and you guys will see, I'll just breathe into it real quick for a second. You see how that moves a little bit. So what you need to do is have the patient get this little blue marker between these two arrows and that's where they need it to stay. Because if they breathe into it quickly, it goes up too fast and if they breathe in slow it won't go up at all so to get a good breath you need to get between those arrows so i'm actually going to do it i'm going to have it face you guys that way you can see what it's doing normally the patient would have it facing them there's a little handle here they can hold it but like i said have it face you guys so you can see what we're doing here so you have your patient take a breath out and when they breathe they're going to breathe in here so make sure they don't blow into it so And if you saw, this thing rose up to 1500. So whenever you document, you would say they got up to 1500 on their incentive spirometer. Um, it's recommended that you do 10 breaths every minute, or I'm sorry, every hour, 10 breaths an hour. Um, some patients struggle with that though, because that's a lot of breathing if they do it really quickly. So I will also tell my patients, maybe do two or three breaths every commercial break of their show. So again, we're gonna take this here and And that's how you use your incentive spirometer.